Good afternoon. Today I'd like to share the learnings of a recent SPAR seismic survey at Okdan project. My name is Marcel Manichelli. I'm a superintendent of resource strategy at Okdan. And the presentation today was made in conjunction with Heather Skins, our global principal geoscientist within BHP Geoscience Excellence Group. We would like to acknowledge and pay respect to the Ghana cultural heritage, spiritual beliefs and relationship with the lands we meet on today. We also would like to acknowledge the Kukatha peoples, the traditional owners of the land on which Okdan project is located. We pay our respect to the elders past and present. We would also like to recognize the traditional owners who are so central to Amikdan, Rock the Downs and surrounding communities. Bangala, Kiwani, Arabana, and Diari. In Perth, I'm speaking from the custodial lands of the Wajuk people from the Nonga Nation. We extend our respect to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people who are present with us today. As per usual, that's the company disclaimer. Uh, please take uh, time to read to it on your own time. Today, I will share the structural architecture learnings from the 2D and sparse 3D seismic inversion results. I also like to share uh, some major survey learnings, success, and limitations. Uh, we will not you know, discuss the inversion methodologies in, within this presentation. On the right side is a high grade C Bornite C, uh, uh, rich Brechtian. Uh, that's a typical mineralization from Okdan, and that is actually result of uh, testing some of the uh, learnings uh, from the seismic that I'm going to present to you today. Okdan is located within the Stuart Shelf, uh, about 65 kilometers southwest of Olympic Dan and uh, 45 kilometers uh, northwest of Carapacina on that tenement here. We also put uh, several uh, uh, releases uh, from Okdan progress in the last uh, five or six years. So we can find everything in BHP webpage, and I encourage you to um, uh, have a look and read through the releases as it tells some of the story of the project. There is also a publication on the geochemistry of Okdan uh, presented by Thiago Oliver in this conference back in 2021. Let's start with the Okdan simplified cross section. We um, uh, Okdan is IOCG de deposits, uh, very typical IOCG deposits, uh, located quite deep with the, um, um, a large sedimentary package on top of it. That is basically two uh, uh, two major groups: uh, the Wipena group and the Pangaea formation. Wipena group is the semi uh, group on top of Olympic Dan. Uh, and the Pandura Formation, the large uh, package, uh, comprises of the sandstones, uh, a little bit of shales and conglomerates, is uh, going from five, uh, 540 to almost a thousand meters thick, depending where in the tenement, on top of the Palio Hill that's located just on top of the hematite core in blue, number one. Uh, that's the shallowest part of the deposit. We can uh, hit that uh, uh, peak with uh, 650 meters below surface. The bulk demineralization is gonna be uh, below 800 meters. Demineralization is the uh, ready, uh, rapid, um, uh, of the chalcocyte bornite around the blue uh, MQ. That's the highest grade mineralization. 
uh, and um, then you have the lowest grade that is the choco part pirate uh, layer extend to that is the uh, orangish number three color on the external side and uh, completing the picture we have the uh, two uh, post mineralization dikes uh, crossing the mineralization from uh, Mafic Dykes number four and uh, and the uh, Gallia Branch Volcanics uh, Felsic Dykes on number five. On the seismic acquisition itself, we have a map of the uh, lines uh, where the acquisition was uh, executed. We did not disturb any lands for the survey. We only did the survey on existing tracks. The survey area is approximately uh, 30 uh, kilometers square. Uh, we have 7,600 uh, receivers, 3,800 sources, a five meter space in receivers that's quite, uh, quite small, uh, and the uh, 10 meters uh, source spacing. We also have um, vertical seismic profile uh, with a permanent optical cable installed. Uh, that's the red dot in the Okadan West. Okadan West is our main target. Okadan East is a uh, uh, unmineralized branch uh, focus of past exploration efforts. The VSP is, is uh, sub vertical, quite deep going from 1700 meters, arguably one of the deepest in the world on uh, Hard Hawk. Uh, going straight to the point with the results of the, the uh, processing, and probably the most impactful image of the presentation is the seismic ref uh, reflection. That was using the reverse time migration uh, that kind of the uh, inversion methodology is developed for high angle structures and, and help it to, to highlight those. Um, opposed to the tr traditional petroleum, where it's more focused or, or sub horizontal um, uh, structures. The dark patch is interpreted at the hard hill fault that bounds the, the mineralization in the West. So the organization uh, sits to the east of the Hard Hill Fault. Uh, I'd like to highlight here that the Hard Hill Fault segmentation by these um, northwest faults um, are, and, and its sinister movement, as you can see on the right image, was previously unknown to, uh, uh, to us. So we, that come to light too. And, uh, after the result of the survey, after you see that image here. We knew about the Arcuna Fault, the Wumia Fault, we knew about the, um, the Hardy Hill Fault being within those two Northwest Faults, and, but we didn't know about its segmentation, we didn't know about the sinister movement. So that's quite new and heavy, big implications for our survey. We also have a P-wave velocity tomography done on, on the tenement, on the volume of the tenement. Here you can see with the uh, uh, cold colors is the low velocity and the hot colors, the high velocity. Uh, you can clearly see the, uh, the cold pads uh, actually uh, within the hand queue in the Okadan uh, deposit, Okadan uh, target. On the plan view on, uh, on the left, the colors was highlighting the low um, semi-color scheme on the cross section on the right. Uh, the outline of the hem queue in black in both of them. On the cross section, we also have the unconformity for reference. So everything above that line of the unconformity is sediments and the weeping group on top. Similar image, just change uh, the color code so we could highlight a bit of the uh, mid range of velocities. Um, I like to highlight uh, some two discrete low velocities in the north of Arcuna Fault. Arcuna Fault being this one and the discrete uh, targets over there. 
We knew about the mineralization. As you can see, we have a drilling from uh, previous exploration efforts, and there is a low grade mineralization into the north, but we did not quite pierce the low velocity uh, anomaly. Uh, as we think uh, today, it we probably missed the NQ uh, on previous efforts. We're not looking for HEMQ because that's not the mineralization that is wraps around the HEMQ, but the HEMQ is the bearing for uh, our definition strategy, is the most uh, sharp content, the most recognizable uh, min, uh, uh, rock in uh, for logging and for the geophysics and something we use to target the um, um, uh, for the minimization, as we know the is going to be around it. So with that information, we are putting everything together. So with drilling, we knew about the minimization, especially the, 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 uh, on the central block. We knew about the HEMQ in the middle. We knew about the high minimization in the central block. We knew about the Omira Arcun offsets. Uh, we did not uh, Sorry, we didn't know about the offset, we knew about the faults. And the offset, we actually learned with the reflection. So with the reflection, we actually could identify not, how, not only how the faults, but also we could identify the movements uh, related and the offsets of the mineralization. And finally, with the velocity, we could identify the HEMQ that we already see identified by drilling, but also the um, possible HEMQs in the north that we are calling at the moment thing one and thing two. And finally, we are uh, putting all together in, in, a, in an open data our geologic interpretation. So that's modified from uh, Oliveira 2021. Uh, and what's new in this map is the Arcun offset, what's this branch over here, we actually have a chance to test some of it already, and that's the core we saw in the beginning of the presentation. We now learn about the offsets of the hard hill fault, where it's very likely to keep going in both sides of north of Arcun fault and Omira fault. We have opportunities for defining uh, mineralogy, uh, um, mineralization uh, north and south uh, of those two boundaries. And as a comparison, how that sets with the diagram that we saw before. So conclusions, the sparse reflection seismic can be very insightful and immensely useful for, for mineralization definition uh, drilling campaigns. But two impor important conditions must be met. Uh, at the time of the survey, need to be as low as possible environmental noise. So if we can always before any mine operation that you're gonna create noise, uh, especially on the high frequency and you're gonna need to be filtered out and you're gonna lose a lot of, of those nuances that was possible to observe here. And also the processing needs to be a fit for purpose for processing, uh, especially optimize it for the high angle structures. Guided by the IOCD knowledge, we felt the bias of past uh, or current interpretations. We learned the P wave velocity can actually identify the HEMQ uh, or the hematite quartz with no aluminum silicates uh, and the associated uh, alteration that comes with it. We also learned the VSP can actually enhance uh, the image, but it has a limited range, does not go too far beyond uh, uh, the drill hole itself. What uh, probably enough for a, a high definition inside of the central block and a, a little bit outside of it, but start to get very fuzzy. And finally, we feel all the seismic work. We learn about the sinister movement of the Northwest faults. Uh, those uh, Northwest neoperator forts are well known from uh, the uh, Stuart shelf, and but the uh, for this project in Okadana was previously assumed as normal faults. 
we did not associate any sinistro transcurrent component to it. And this does have implication to the Okadan drilling strategy for now on. I'd like to acknowledge that is a team of team efforts, not only internal to BHP, but for the third party companies that support us on that endeavor. And is a lot of people involved. So a special thanks for Okadan Geoscience and Operations. Uh, innovation and uh, ventures and just science excellence teams from BHP. We also like to thank you, High Size, CDG, Real Time Seismic, Silix, uh, Faraco, and Black Ranger Park that they have a uh, good uh, uh, and very important role in parts of the survey. And that's it from me today. Thank you very much. And yeah.